Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you why I think that no build minivan campers are so convenient. For this trip, I have my entire family coming with me. So I pulled my bed and my mattress out and I also put this extra seat in so that I can sit up to six people inside of the minivan. We wanted to take one of these last opportunities to go and see Niagara Falls while we're here in the Northeast, but it is just very far out of reach and we haven't had the chance to get here since we've been here. So I wanna take this opportunity, drive the six plus hours out to Niagara Falls and see what kind of wonders and beauty there are at the place. It was easy to remove the bed and put a chair from the middle row back in. I can keep my solar set up with my mini fridge and my portable power station. The best part about this is that it's not complicated. Nothing is very heavy and everything folds up to store out of the way. For me, this is probably the main reason I stick with a no build minivan camper over something more permanent. It only takes a few minutes to set up the van for carrying passengers. For this trip, we plan to sleep in a hotel so that everyone can be comfortable. I don't personally mind being cold, but I want my party to be happy and comfortable. So that pretty much rules out stealth camping. The better the memories are, the more we'll want to make them together. So we got a perfect view, I think right here. We can see Niagara Falls a little bit. We're gonna walk over there and check it out in a minute. And those buildings are in Canada. The sight at the cliffs of Niagara Falls was one of the most amazing that I have ever seen. I walked to the edge of the overlook and the camera could not replicate what I saw with my eyes. It was stunning. The falls had the rhythm of a rolling thunder that I could sit by and listen to for hours. Things like this make me realize how I am really just a small part of everything around me. And the most important thing was my kids enjoyed this so much. What's the best part about this? Before we head back home, we're going to make one more stop at the Fort Niagara State Park that overlooks Lake Ontario. This location was used by the French dating as far back as 1678 and has an old lighthouse that helped navigate to the Niagara River. We figured that while we're here, we might as well stop and see some of those historic sites. It's not likely that we'll ever make our way back to this side of the country, but I guess you never know. Outside Fort Niagara, it does look like a bunch of old buildings. So there's the lighthouse. What are you pointing at? Look how many steps. So this giant flag has a very interesting story. It was made in 1809 
And during the War of 1812, it was captured by the British. And it remained in Scotland with the ancestral family of the capturers until about 1994 when the old Fort Niagara Museum Association actually repurchased the flag. So it's interesting to me because it was captured by, you know, the British. It remained so far away. Man with beard. So all of the artwork that we see here was painted by this guy right here. This is a self-portrait of Ernst Willie. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but all of the artwork here was made while he was a POW here at Fort Niagara in 1944, just before the end of World War II. here is so bad today that I have been worried about the solar panel flying off of the top of the van but I have seen now two trees laid down across the middle of this Niagara Falls State Parkway it is just wild